Hey guys, would you guys like to know how to set up an incubator for your reptile eggs without spending a fortune on commercial incubators? Well, stick around. So guys, look, I'm going to be fully honest with you before we continue with this video. Originally, I was just going to basically make a video showing how to set up an incubator without spending too much money on a commercial based one. And that's what we're going to do today. Uh, but I also happen to have had a children's python that's been gravid for a little while. And like I was planning on doing this video today anyways, uh, just setting up the incubator just to show you guys how it's done and that's pretty much it. I went to check on her this morning and she's actually laid her clutch of eggs as well. So this incubator I'm setting up in this video is actually going to have eggs in it by the end of this video. It's not just for educational purposes. So that's kind of really good timing, I guess. And um, yeah, so we'll jump into the video. I'll show you how the incubator is set up. Then I'll show you the eggs that this uh, children's python of mine's laid. So the only real expensive item in this incubator setup is the thermostat. Uh, you don't want to kind of cheapen out on a thermostat. I would get a half decent one at least. Uh, that's the only really important piece of equipment that I would kind of spend a bit of money on. Other than that, everything else in this uh, setup is relatively inexpensive. There's nothing wrong with buying a commercial incubator. They're perfectly fine. They work great. Um, they look a lot nicer if that's what you're worried about. This incubator I'm going to be setting up isn't going to be looking that nice. It's purely just for functional purposes and saving money rather than getting a kind of top of the line sort of overly expensive incubator that just happens to look kind of cool as well but whatever you prefer is what we're doing. So you just want to get yourself a cooler or an esky. Um, these are great because they hold temperature really well. Um, they're obviously cheap as well. So you want to drill a hole in it as well. So I've drilled a hole in the side here and that's basically for my thermostat probe to go in. Next thing you'll need, water bottles. With water in them, of course. And I'll explain why we need those in a second. Next thing you'll need is a shelf to go in your incubator. This is so the eggs aren't sitting directly on the bottom of your cooler. They need to be elevated so they get even flow around them of warm air. Uh, you can just rig up a shelf from anything you want, really. You can make one out of virtually anything. I'm using egg crate, um, which I'm just going to cable tie these bits on here to make it like a little table almost. And yeah, that's my shelf. You'll also need a heat cable. Uh, this is obviously what's going to be the heat source for your incubator. Some duct tape just to attach the heat cable to the inside of the cooler. A set of digital scales, ones that can weigh grams, not just kilos. Vermiculite. This is what you'll be incubating your eggs in. And you can get this from most garden centers, nurseries, hardware stores, um, even on eBay, you can get this stuff. So yeah, very important stuff. That's all you'll need. Let's get started. So as you can see, I've got my little shelf I put together here. I've pretty much just used zip ties. Uh, and yeah, so that just kind of sits in there like that. And that'll hold my egg box. Now, those bottles of water, I was, uh, showing you guys before, reason they're important, well they're not 100% necessary but they make it the whole thing a little bit more efficient, um, is because you just want to literally just rest them on the bottom of the incubator like this when it's done of course. And the reason you put bottles of water in is because water holds temperature really well. Um, and when you open your incubator every week, because usually what you want to do is open the incubator up and check the eggs at least once a week. You don't want to do it more than once a week because you just change the temperature too up too much. Too much like temperature fluctuation can uh, sometimes kill the eggs. So yeah, but at the least you want to check on them once a week. And when you do that, obviously you're opening the incubator up and you're losing temperature. So the water holds temperature really well. So when you open it up and check on your eggs and you put your lid back on, the temperature that the water's hanging on to helps bring the incubator back up to temperature quicker than if the water wasn't in there. So that's why uh, it's kind of recommended to just have a few bottles of water on the bottom if you're able to. Um, like I said, it's not 100% necessary, but it just makes it a little bit easier for the incubator to bring its temperature back up when you open it to check your eggs. So I'm going to take them out for now because we don't need them right now because they're going to get in the way. Um, pretty much what I'm going to do is just kind of sticky tape the heat cable 
inside here, just going up and down the sides. Doesn't have to look neat and tidy and perfect as long as it just works. Um, this is a spare heat cable I've just had lying around and it's the only one I've got lying around right now. The problem is it's um, huge. <laughs> it's a very, very long heat cable. I'm, no, I'm not going to use the whole thing, there's no way. I'm just going to use whatever portion I end up using and that's it. Um, but yeah, that's. I'm just going to use what I can out of this and um, see how it looks, I guess. Okay, so that's done. Um, yeah, I didn't use all the heat cable because it is quite long, so the rest of it's just gonna have to stay out of the cooler, I guess. Okay, so next uh, I'm just gonna chuck the water bottles in and my shelf as well. So that one can just go there. So I could probably put a fourth one in too. Um, I'll just add that later because I don't have it on me right now. So basically that's pretty much it. Other than that, you just want to take the probe to your thermostat and that goes through the hole too. Like so. And you just want to have this sitting kind of um, on the actual egg shelf itself. So it's in a centered part of the incubator, that'll give you the most accurate kind of um, temperature gradient because if you have the thermostat probe like right up next to the heat cable, yeah, not a great spot to have it. You'd be better off just having it in the center, which is basically where the eggs are mostly going to be, in the center area of the incubator if possible. So you can either just like uh, zip tie it to the shelf or, or sticky tape it or whatever, but yeah. Have it in there, have it on, around the center of the shelf if you can. A lot of people do like to have it actually in their egg box as well. That's fine if you want to have the um, thermostat probe actually inside the egg box. Just poke a hole in the lid so you can fit it through. Okay, so next we're going to mix up our vermiculite into our containers. So you want to just get yourself a Tupperware container of some sort. You want one that's got some depth to it so you have some room for vermiculite because it's going to be at least half full of vermiculite. I've also got a hole in opposite ends of the lid corners, so one there and one there. Uh, you don't want to go too much more than that just because you want to try and retain some humidity in this container. So I just find just having a hole there and a hole there works fine. Uh, it's enough for, for some oxygen exchange without having too much you know, ventilation going, I guess if that makes sense. Uh, that's why I've got sticky tape here because this actually had a lot of holes in it so I had to tape them up. I suppose if you wanted to, you could go one hole in each corner. It doesn't make too much of a difference because uh, the incubator itself is not huge, so it's going to kind of keep that humid humidity level sort of up anyways. I will also mention that if you wanted to do something like this with a much larger container, like a, maybe a really, really big cooler or even a freezer or an old fridge, a lot of people use them as well. Uh, you also would want to maybe chuck in a couple of exhaust fans. Just because a larger volume's not going to be able to spread the hot, the warm air around as evenly, just left to the heat cable alone. So you want to have a little, you can just get like computer fans, those little exhaust fans, uh, have one or two of them in there just blowing the air around. But for a small one like this, it's not really necessary as this will just evenly heat up because it's only a small volume. And I've based, and I've set my uh, thermostat to 31.5 degrees. Um, and that is kind of the temperature you want to aim for for children's pythons. It doesn't have to be right on 31.5, it can be down to 31 to 30, but 31.5 is kind of good for me, it's what seems to work, so that's what I do. Okay, so next we want to weigh our vermiculite, so put our container on the scales and tear that container down to zero. Put whatever amount of vermiculite you feel you need for the container size you're using.
Like I'm going to go around two thirds, or just slightly over half. So yeah, that'll do fine. So you want to do a one to one ratio of weight of vermiculite versus weight of water. So the vermiculite I've got on there at the moment is 270 grams. So I'm going to use 270 grams of water. So now I'm going to basically weigh out the same amount of water as I did vermiculite, which was 270 grams. So just tear that, and away we go. Two seventy, two eighty. Okay, so I probably won't use all of it, but the ten grams isn't much of a difference. All right, next we just mix it with the vermiculite. So let's get this out of the way. So you want to kind of just spread it around. Do it a little bit at a time. Mix it through so it's even. The thing is, you don't want this to be overly wet. You want to be able to, like when you're done, pick up a handful and squeeze it as hard as you can and not have any water drip from your hands. If you can pick this up and squeeze it and water drips out, you've put way too much water and you want to just start again. So you just want that kind of perfect balance where it's moist and slightly damp, but you can't actually squeeze water from it. Make sure it is mixed well so it's nice and even so you don't get like one section that's really really damp and another section that's really dry. vacuum after this video because I'm making quite a mess with this actually. Okay, one last mix through. Right, that looks pretty good. You can give it a squeeze test if you want, just grab it, give it a squeeze. I see there's no water coming out, so that's perfect. But I can actually feel that's damp, but I can't squeeze water from it. Pretty much each little um, part, like piece of vermiculite can absorb a certain amount of water. And you want to have that mix so it's absorbed water, but not to the point where it'll lose water if it's squeezed. You want to um, not have the vermiculite absorb its maximum amount of water. There's room for more absorption, so that means when you squeeze it, you're not going to lose water, which means uh, you don't have too much in there. That's kind of the indicator you use, just the squeeze test. If that makes sense, I'm kind of bad at explaining that one, but yeah. Alright, that's done. Now let's get the snake and pop the eggs in. Okay, so this is basically the egg box that I've had her breed in. Um, yeah, she's already getting a bit agitated in there. She can see me through the container because I've moved her. Pretty much it's just another Tupperware container with a hole cut in it that she can go in. I've just put some damp substrate in there. Uh, usually I like to use sphagnum moss, but I was all out. Um, so I just kind of used um, cocoa fiber and just a reptile bedding mix. And I just made it slightly damp, put it in her enclosure um, near the warmer spot of the tank. So the egg box was around 30 degrees Celsius and she just kind of went in on her own. She kind of sat in there for about uh, a week and a bit, maybe two weeks and yeah, this morning she's she's late, so um, yeah, let's check her out. Right, so there we go, so that looks like a pretty nice batch. They look pretty good and plump. Um, she's probably not going to be too happy being taken off them, uh, but like I said, they do need to be incubated. Uh, you can sometimes leave them with the female and she'll self-incubate them. Um, reptiles normally can't generate their own body heat 
but when snakes actually have eggs like this, they can actually generate body heat to incubate them. What they'll do is they'll actually shiver their muscles really, really quickly and really fast, almost like they're vibrating, to generate heat. Um, but as far as things like uh, humidity goes, in a with like leaving the snake to incubate the eggs in the enclosure, enclosures aren't going to have the same level of humidity and the same consistency of humidity as an incubator. So leaving the snake to incubate them in the enclosure, I'm not saying it's not a, a good way to do it. It is successful sometimes, but you get better odds incubating them yourself. So the next thing I want to do is just take her off her eggs. Um, you'll notice all the eggs are kind of clumped together and that's because when snakes lay eggs they come out with a bit of a glue on them and that glue sets pretty quickly so you end up with just a pile of eggs stuck together. It's kind of good because you can just pick up the whole thing in one piece and pop it in the vermiculite um, because with reptile eggs if you turn them they can pretty much die because there's a little air pocket at the top of the egg which the embryo is breathing from and if you turn the egg the embryo suffocates and just drowns. So it is good to get a pencil and mark the top of the egg with just a little like dot or something just so you know which is the top of the egg in case it does get turned while you're moving them. But like I said when they're stuck together like this it's usually pretty safe. Um, you also want to be careful get, taking the snake off the eggs because sometimes she can get a bit agitated and as a result she'll accidentally start like constricting her own eggs just because you're agitating her. So you kind of have to just carefully get her off and not agitate her too much. So she's already annoyed now because I've kind of opened up the box and she doesn't really know what to do. If I can just get her to crawl off them herself without forcing her so she doesn't constrict her eggs, that'd be great. So I'm just going to take her head with this and get her to just move off her eggs. I'm going to just point her head in a direction. Yes, and she's very reluctant at the moment. I'm Okay, so her tail's still under the eggs, I don't want her to... So she's starting to move, so I'll just let her go on her own and her tail will just come off. There we go. So they look quite good. Um, they're nice and fat and plump, which is a good sign. They're all stuck together, which is great. I'm going to leave them like that. Uh, so it looks like I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's an average clutch. Children's pythons can lay anywhere from eight to eighteen eggs on average. Uh, she is only a small female, and this is her first clutch she's had while I've had her. So. Um, this is probably her first clutch, I'd say. I mean, she was already a young adult when I got it, so I'm assuming this is her first clutch. It kind of looks like it. So I wasn't expecting a big one, but it's still great. So, this little egg here on the side is only barely hanging on to the rest. So just as a precaution, in case it does detach while I move it, I'm going to just mark that one. The others seem pretty solid, so you want to get a pencil and just make sure it's not like pointy. It's like blunt in it a little bit, so that you don't poke the egg and break it. But I just want to leave a little line there, and that'll be the top of the egg. Okay, so I'm just going to place them in this. So you want to kind of bury, like slightly bury the eggs in the vermiculite. So I'm just going to dig out a tiny little divot, just about a centimeter or so. Grab the clutch of eggs very, very carefully. Just chuck them in there. Okay, and I just want to kind of gently pack the vermiculite just around the edges. You don't want to bury them too much, but that right there is basically what you want. I would also recommend keeping a logbook of these, just write down the date they were laid and the date they're expected to hatch. So these eggs will take roughly about two months to hatch, so pretty much, yeah, two months from now, roughly, um, fingers crossed, they'll hatch. You'll notice that usually before they're about to hatch, like a few days before they're going to hatch, the eggs won't look as plump as this, so they'll almost start like shriveling up a little bit and deflating a little bit. That's nothing to worry about as long as it's within that kind of end of the cycle sort of period. Um, 
like if the eggs after just a week or so of being in the incubator were starting to look a bit shriveled, that could be a sign that they're just not getting enough moisture and that means your vermiculite might not have been damp enough so you can just kind of um, re-moisten that vermiculite slightly ever so carefully if you want to even like spray a tiny little bit of water on the eggs and I'll actually absorb it just a tiny little bit um, but generally they should just stay nice and plump like this if this is mixed correctly and your incubator is at the right temperature um, and just like the last week roughly of incubation before they're due to hatch they'll start to shrivel up a little um, that's normal, that's just a sign that the babies are pretty much absorbing the last of the yolk in the eggs, hence why the eggs are looking more shriveled and smaller, and they're going to be popping out soon. Alright, we'll chuck these in the incubator and cross our fingers that everything goes well in the next two months. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a like. Don't forget to bing that notification bell so you guys know when I upload new videos. My Instagram is down below if you'd like to follow me there as well. But until then, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye bye.